the occupied West Bank, where heavily armed and masked Israeli soldiers have stormed Al Jazeera's Ramallah Bureau. Staff were given 10 minutes to gather their belongings and leave. Doors to the office have been shut, uh, welded shut, and the military has ordered the bureau to close for 45 days. It did not give a reason. Fintan Monaghan begins our coverage. Israeli troops moved in before sunrise. Their mission? To silence Al Jazeera's reporting in the occupied West Bank. Many wore masks and were heavily armed. In the hallway, the soldiers confronted Al Jazeera's bureau chief, who carried nothing but a microphone. This is a decision that was made by one of the Israeli generals. He is ordering us to immediately leave the office and take our personal belongings and cameras. The army says we have only 10 minutes to take our belongings and leave the office so they can shut it down. The office will be closed for 45 days. Israeli forces also tore down banners of Al Jazeera journalist Shirin Abu Akla. She was killed by Israeli forces in 2022 while reporting in the Janine refugee camp. Banners like this stood as a reminder of Israel's past attacks on journalism, memories it is now seeking to erase. Transparently vengeance for Al Jazeera's crime of reporting the truth about what Israel is doing in the occupied Palestinian territories. Uh, Israel is carrying out endless atrocities and nobody has done a better job of reporting on them than Al Jazeera has. And I think this is a transparent effort by Israel to essentially punish Al Jazeera for that crime and also to ensure that there is even less coverage of that reality and less of it comes out to the rest of the world. Media rights groups have condemned Israel's restrictions and attacks on journalists. Al Jazeera has been a constant presence in Palestine giving voice to a people who are rarely heard in the international media. These voices often challenge Israel's narrative, something it appears it is no longer willing to accept. Uh, their whole strategy in Israel is to produce a narrative about Israel, about Palestinians, about Zionism, about the Arab-Israeli conflict, about terrorism, about all of these issues that are swirling around the region. And that narrative says that the Israelis are good guys, and the Palestinians and the Arabs and Muslims are bad guys, and they're a threat. And this is a narrative that the, the Israelis have succeeded in disseminating all over the world. Israel's shutdown of Al Jazeera's bureau in the occupied West Bank follows its expulsion of the network's reporters from Israel a few months ago. As Israel struggles with growing criticism of its war on Gaza, it is now seeking to control what people can see and prevent its critics from being heard. Benton Monaghan, Al Jazeera. Israeli forces have intensified their attacks on Palestinian towns and cities in the occupied West Bank in recent months. Since October the 7th, Israeli troops and settlers have killed at least 714 Palestinians and injured more than 6,000. Last week, the UN General Assembly voted overwhelmingly in favour of a resolution demanding Israel immediately end its unlawful presence in the Palestinian territories. In August, the Israeli military launched its largest operation in the occupied West Bank in more than 20 years. At least 39 people were killed, most of them in Janine. And Israeli forces have also been accused of desecrating the bodies of Palestinians. Just on Thursday, footage emerged of soldiers throwing at least three bodies off a rooftop in the town of Kabatia. We just uh, have gotten an update from the Palestinian Authority that have put out a statement in regards to the closure of the Al Jazeera office in Ramallah. I'll read uh, part of it because it is uh, quite lengthy. It says it condemns in the strongest terms the occupation forces storming of the city of Ramallah and the closure of the Al Jazeera office and the confiscation of its contents. It goes on to say the ministry stresses that the failure of the international community, especially the UN Security Council, to respect its resolution and ensure its implementation, as well as the failure to provide international protection for the Palestinian people and the silence on the war of extermination and displacement encourages the far-right Israeli government to commit more violations and crimes and undermine any chance of reviving the peace process based on the principle of a solution. That is the Palestinian Authority's uh, latest statement in regards to the closure of Al Jazeera's offices in Ramallah.
Well, the Foreign Press Association has also just released a statement saying it is deeply troubled by this escalation and urges the Israeli government to reconsider these actions. Restricting foreign reporters and closing news channels signals a shift away from democratic values. Okay, well, we're going to bring in Mustafa Baghouti, who is the Secretary General of the Palestinian National Initiative to help us unpack all of this, including uh, the latest statement from the Palestinian Authority. What did you make of that, uh, especially in, in light of the silence, I guess, that we have had over the last few hours uh, from them in regards to Al Jazeera's uh, office closure? It's good that they issued this statement, especially that the license of Al Jazeera office in Ramallah is given by the Palestinian Authority, not by uh, any other entity. And the fact that Israel enters Ramallah, which is the headquarters of the authority, and then closes a structure that is li licensed by the Palestinian Authority shows you that Israel has no respect to anybody and that there is no real authority for the Palestinian Authority. As a matter of fact, let me tell you, the license that was given to Al Jazeera was, was given by me when I was Minister of Information in the only national unity government that we ever had. And uh, the fact that the Israeli army can just come in and close the offices, it shows you how undemocratic Israel is. Because they have no legal standing to do this. They have they... no legal standing and it is an, an act of oppression and suppression of free voice. They're very angry that Al Jazeera was bringing the truth about what's happening in Gaza and, in the, and, and, and the occupied territories in general to the world when Israel prevented all foreign journalists from entering Gaza. And not that only, they killed 174 Palestinian journalists in Gaza, including several of Al Jazeera correspondents. Yeah, and just on that point, uh, I just want to uh, bring our viewers' attention to this. Israeli forces, as we've mentioned, have repeatedly targeted Al Jazeera journalists and correspondents. In 2022, soldiers shot and killed Shireen Abu Akleh while she was reporting in Janine. She was wearing a blue flak jacket, clearly marked with the word press. A UN investigation found Israel used lethal force without justification. Now, a year earlier, Israeli forces destroyed a tower housing Al Jazeera's office in Gaza. They said Hamas was using the building, but provided no evidence. More recently, during the war on Gaza, Israeli forces have killed journalists, including Ismail Al Ghul and Sama Abu Dhaka, and their families. Mr. this is just uh, one more notch, uh, one more thing that uh, Israel has done to try and suppress the facts, the, the real stories coming from Gaza as well as the territories, isn't it? Were you surprised that this happened now? I mean, you, you said that Israel has been very unhappy with uh, those stories getting out to the wider public. So why now? Because Al Jazeera has been reporting these stories since the war broke out back in October last year. Actually, I'm not surprised, uh, and I tell you why, but uh, uh, Israel is uh, trying to shut out any voice. I mean, the question here is, Israel is changing into a fascist system, a fascist regime. And in my opinion, the, their oppression, uh, not only an, uh, of, of Al Jazeera, but of media outlets in general, and their the way they are killing Palestinians and the number of Palestinians killed so far shows you that there is a trend towards fascism. They, it is a lawless uh, situation of lawlessness. They can do whatever they want, anywhere they want. They can shoot and kill not only journalists, by the way, 174 journalists, but also 884 medical people. So they are behaving in a totally uncontrolled manner. They feel they, have, they don't have to respect any law. And uh, of course, I do agree with those who said that this would not have happened if it wasn't for the silence of uh, mainstream Western media. Just uh, going back to the uh, occupied West Bank, do you believe that there is effectively a full occupation uh, by Israel in the territories? Exactly. This, is, this act also shows you that Israel has already reoccupied all of the West Bank completely. In the sense, it was always there, but there was a Palestinian authority which had the security control over the so-called Area A, including Ramallah. Mm. And uh, they had a civil authority over Area B. Now Israel is dismantling all of that. 
Uh, practically, the West Bank today is under full Israeli military occupation. The Palestinian Authority is absolutely marginalized, has no power whatsoever. It's an authority under occupation. Mm. And uh, at the same time, they are arresting people left and right in any city they want. They, they shoot and kill people, even children, without uh, being accountable to any law. So this is a very dangerous moment. And mm. I don't know if uh, Western leaders who are watching what's happening understand exactly what's, what's going on. I don't know if they realize that Israel has gone so far that it is practicing what fascists do, what fascists used to do in Chile, in, Germ in Germany, and in many other places. So w what do you think that means now for those occupied territories and the people that, that live there in, in the months and, and years going, going ahead? If, if what you're saying, I guess, is solidified that, uh, that Israel basically fully occupies those territories, what is it going to mean for those people that are living there? More suffering, uh, more suffering at every level. Uh, more suffering in terms of you are not, you don't feel secure. You have no guarantee that they will not be arresting you at any moment. Uh, you, you, people feel, f uh, f uh, they, they feel afraid for their children, for their families. And at the same time, uh, it, 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 it means that Israel is also trying to paralyze Palestinian economy. Uh, the whole life in the Palestinian occupied territories is terribly affected by this situation and it will get worse unless Israel is subjected to sanctions. Mm. The only language that Israel would understand are not statements and condemnations. They, these mean nothing to them. The only thing that can stop Israel from proceeding with this terrible attack and, and terrible continuous oppression is threatening them with sanctions and practicing sanctions against them. You, you touched on this uh, just a little bit before about Western leaders and Western powers not maybe fully understanding exactly what Israel is doing here. Do you think that that is sheer ignorance or are they willfully looking the other way? No, it's not ignorance. It is simply uh, that they do not apply the law to Israel. They are allowing Israel to be above the law, above international law, above international humanitarian law. And uh, Israel is getting away with war crimes. We are talking about three war crimes that are happening in parallel. The war crime of genocide, the war crime of collective punishment, and the war crime of ethnic cleansing happening in Gaza and now expanding to the West Bank and into Lebanon. And add to that now a full and total suppression of freedom of, of expression and attacks on journalism and media. Imagine that what happened today happened in Moscow or in Minsk, mm -hmm. let's say. What would be the world's uh, Western leaders' reaction? Everybody will be speaking about democracy, the right of expression, the freedom of speech that are, that are suppressed. But when it comes to Israel, silence. That means what? That means they are not only supporting Israel, they are actually complicit with Israeli crimes. Mustafa, thank you once again uh, for your insight into all of this. Uh, Mustafa Bakuti, thank you. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.